guys, what is up? Tabs McCaffrey here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have another thrift trip. I'm just waiting for Value Village to open and we're gonna head on in. This week I have found some amazing pieces. Not like huge thrift hauls, but like thrift hauls with like value. I'm so excited. I don't know what to expect. I'm hoping it's good. I wanna make some money. Okay, let's go in. We're gonna go over what I leave and then we'll head back home and do what I'm gonna keep and why I'm keeping it. Anyways, okay, I hope you guys love this. Let's head in. All right, let's go through the pile of things that I'm not taking. First pair is these Lulu's oh my god look at the pilling on those that's crazy it also had a hole in the crotch i was not taking them even for 10 bucks not worth it too far damaged these next ones were lulu's as well they didn't have a size dot anywhere i didn't know what size they were they're asking 30 dollars, and there was some flaws to the stitching i just wasn't confident on the resale of them they could have been a really cool style but just no size dot and the stitching two no's for me this next pair, I swore they were Lulu's. They felt like those really nice cotton knit Lulu's. Couldn't find the logo anywhere, so probably really good fakes in, in my opinion. <laughs> and then these next ones, Lulu's again, but they're like a short crop, like the ones right below the knees, not a style that I try and pick up and sell. And they were asking $17.99 for them, too much. Last Lulu item, oh my gosh, I found a lot of Lulu on this trip, was an older pair of shorts. Just didn't love the color of them. Sorry for those people kind of hanging out there. <laughs> and uh, I found these two pairs of shoes, which I'm passing on. The Keens were 15 bucks. Not a big fan of the color, looked up comps on them. They weren't looking that great. And these Reebok CrossFit Metcon shoes, same thing. Resale was like $45 to $50 and Value Village was asking 20 bucks. Just not enough profit. They were also like a five and a half, so pretty small feet too. Uh, let's take a look. So this is my keep pile, some of those Lulu stuff. I did find an air purifier, go figure, and uh, a bunch of really cool pieces. Yes, there's sweaters in the cart. We're gonna cover those soon. Lord, you know it's a good day when you don't have very much to put back. I would love to talk to you guys while I'm in the store going through things, but they play the music so loud in my Valley Village. I don't want to get copywritten. I have to be careful. We're going to head home and I'm going to share what I found. There is some really good stuff in here. I'm excited. Okay, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it's like no storm happening right now. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait for summer. Okay. Let's get going. I'll see you guys in a few. Okay, I am back in my room. I'm so excited to go over these things. I've been kind of going through and search a few items up. I'm really stuck on pricing on a couple of items. If you can add in your comments, tell me what your thoughts are, or if you've sold previous items that are similar, please let me know. Okay, let's get this rolling. I'm gonna save my favorite item for last. I'm gonna start off with this really cool embroidered, it says the Four Wing Cold Lake, a tourism thing, but I'm gonna show you guys up nice and close. Can you see the embroidery? Like this wolf is stitched. It is stitched onto this sweater. Not something that I think that's like super valuable. I just like it cause it's so unique and I love these unique pieces excited to find this one not a like a huge bolo but just something that I kind of nerd out on I just sold one of these sweaters this one is an Eddie Bauer sweater it does have a few very very minor blemishes like very minor stains I'm not even worried about it but I just sold a sweater like this I think for $35 I had it listed at 50 so I accept reasonable offers I'm gonna get this one listed right away there is a bunch of Eddie Bauer sweaters like this that are these really like thick kind of material sweaters. A couple of them were just in bad condition, not worth picking up or trying to sell. I know I wasn't gonna pick up sweaters. I, I lie to you guys. I lie straight through my teeth. I will continue to pick up sweaters. <laughs> Next item is this Billabong Rash Guard. I love these pieces. This one is in pretty good condition. I sold a bunch of these in early spring last year. I'm always on the lookout for them. I may, oh, this one is a size large. Oh, maybe it'll fit. No, I need to sell it, not fit me. And I think I was selling them from maybe 40 to $50. And if they were long sleeve, they would be worth more money. And depending on the type of rash guard material, sometimes it's like a neoprene and that 
those ones, those are worth more money. I did find a few Lulu pieces, but I'm going to hold off on those. This is an item that I probably need some help on. The brand isn't, it's Deca Paris. I don't think it's a brand of like note, you know, something that you need to keep track of. What I like about this is the style. Like it has that cottage core kind of style. This ties up in the front, almost like a faux corset. And then the bottom is all ruffly. Now the content of this dress, like the material content is kind of thin. That is my only concern. And I can't find like a material tag anywhere in it, but the style is so cool. I don't even know what to list this at. I've heard some people selling cottage core things from like a hundred to like $250. This isn't a Gunny Sacks. I, I don't think it's a notable brand. I'll show you guys what the tag looks like. I don't know if you recognize it. The style is there, like so beautiful. All right, I'm excited about this one. What are your thoughts on pricing? I will take input if you've sold anything similar that wasn't like a brand, a bolo brand, but in that cottage core style. That's kind of a new style for me. Like I, I tag things as cottage core and I pick up what I think is cottage core, but I've never picked up like this style of cottage core. Very new for me. This next one, I was really quick to spot it and I could just tell by the material content. It's a free people white tunic, really good condition. It isn't an extra small because free people fits oversized. I find a lot of people that shop for free people stuff know that they can buy an extra small if they're a small or a medium. And I get lots of people that are like message me and they're like, do you think this would fit? And most time I'll pull it out I'll be, or I'll look at the measurements and I'll be like, yeah, that would totally fit you even though it is sized as an extra small. So that was a cool piece. I love those kind of summery free people pieces. What else is in here? I'm going to grab some of these from the bottom. This next item, this is an older style Lululemon run swiftly or whatever that style is <laughs> top. And I could tell because there was a size dot in the bottom or it looks to be like there was a size dot but it's gone. I don't know what size it is. What I do when I don't know the size of these shirts or there's no tag, I will look at the fit of the top and make my best estimated guess at what size I think it is. And then I will also state that in the listing saying, there is no size on this. I am basing the size off of measurements and I will include the measurement and then hopefully they have a top at home that they can double check the measurement against. I've actually never had out of like almost 3000 items. I don't think I've ever had a case on size. Actually I did once and it was like when I first was a reseller, I'd only been selling for like a couple months and it totally was my fault. It was a sweater that was slightly shrunk that I put as the size on the tag and it wasn't. And I just accepted the return. It was my bad. Going forward from that point, I always based my sizing off of measurements unless it's like a designer item where their sizing is off anyways. This next pair is a pair of, I don't even know the style. They're Lululemon joggers. I really like them. I paid up for these and I picked them up for work. These are pants that I would probably wear to work. They're in pretty good condition. They're size eight. Tag is still crispy, but yeah, not for resale. They're for myself. Keeping those, better throw them in another pile. Next Lulu piece that I grabbed is this tank top. This is another one that was missing the size on it. I don't know if you recognize the style. Like I said before, I didn't really suck at finding the styles. This is what the back looks like, but yeah, there's no, there's no rip tag in there. I wish they had another way of sizing their clothes besides this little rip tag in the back. Oh, well, I don't think they really care. Lulu, if you're listening to me, can you figure out a better size system for telling us what size your clothes are? Thanks. Just note that. Okay, let's get into the sweaters that I grabbed. There is a 30% off coupon right now. I will check the sweater section because you never know what you're going to find, right? And if it is a true, true winter piece, I'm just going to put it away for next year. But I feel like I got some really nice spring pieces. First one is this sweater. It's made in Ecuador. It's a wool sweater. There's no real brand to it, but it's super unique. I love the color of it. 
these pieces actually do really well. So these pieces I can usually resell for fifty to a hundred dollars, depending on the size, the the pattern on it, um, the condition, things like that. This sweater I'm probably going to list at seventy five dollars, and I have no doubt that it'll sell within a week just from how quickly these types of sweaters have sold for me in the past. They're really unique and people like quirky, unique, bright colored clothing, especially going into spring and summer. This is like the perfect kind of spring sweater. Yeah, I really like it. There's no damage either. Everything looked to be in good condition. This next one is a Northern Reflections and I'm gonna show you guys the tag because this is the tag I'm always looking for. That is usually their like higher quality and it's their older pieces. A lot of the newer Northern Reflections, the quality is like crap. Like it's just not that great, but I love their older pieces. This is a wool blend sweater with a Fair Isle print and the tone is really nice has like the design on the bottom. I think that this is gonna sell in spring. This is like a perfect sweater for outdoors, for hiking, for doing anything out in the mountains or just like being outside. These are great pieces. They're nice and warm and very like that gore core. I don't know if you ever use that keyword, but it's G-O-R-C-O-R-E. And I, I can't remember who told me it. I, if you are watching this video, comment, say, it was me, it was me. But someone told me about that keyword and I use it all the time. Basically, I think it's like, I hate to use this term, granola cruncher. And I kind of consider myself that, but it's like a granola person. So it's called gore core, gore core. Yeah. Anyways, very gore core. This next one, I don't know. I didn't look it up. I just grabbed it on style. It's called new, new Vogue. It is a wool blend. It really reminded me of those Nordic sweaters. And the reason being is like, look at the clasp here. This is something that you commonly see on those um, Nordic pieces. So I imagine there's some value in this. I just didn't search comps. I grabbed it. It kind of hit the trends and the styles and the color tones that I look for. I think I'm going to, because it's vintage, I'm going to cross list this over to Etsy right away. It will probably sell pretty quickly. I'm not going to keep this one for winter because it still has some like nice tones to it. This next one is super cool. It is a vintage one. You can tell by the tag. I'll show you this old school kind of 80s tag and it is acrylic. Although it's funny because it feels like a cotton blend knit but here's the style love the colors of it kind of has that blue stripe through it very like neutral toned i guess you could say it reminds me of a coastal piece i will definitely use this, the keyword tag coastal in this and i can just see this with a pair of like wide leg jeans and some uh, doc martens just oversized very cute knit sweater love this piece oh my gosh you guys i'm just I have a sweater problem. I love all sweaters. I'm sorry if I say like the same thing over and over, but I, I truly do. This next one is my absolute favorite from today. It is so cool. So this is a Woolrich sweater. I'm going to show you the tag. That's what Woolrich looks like. You should be looking out for that brand and look at the print. Do you see that? It is so cool there's like design on the sleeve oh my gosh and it is a hundred percent wool this is an it says it's an xl so i guess maybe like a women's xl but it's it's quite short i think this is another piece that's going to do really good in my etsy shop i am not worried about this one selling but very canadian too i forgot i grabbed a pair of shoes these ones uh, I'll show you. So what are they? Leather collection. They are a size eight and a half. And I just love this woven pattern to me. This is very summer, very spring. I love these shoes. So if I can find them for a decent price, I will probably list these at like 45. I don't, I don't think I'll have a problem selling them. Something I'm always on the lookout 
good leather shoes. We are down to the last piece. So this last piece, I do not find this often. I was shocked because I don't even typically look in the sleeveless tops. It's not a section that I go to. I don't feel like the return is usually that big in the section. Uh, sleeveless tops, unless you're finding like high-end ones, they just don't, I don't know. There's lots of garbage in my, in, in my store. So I was looking on the other, like the, like you're walking down the aisle and one side is sleeveless and one side is like short sleeve knits. And I'm looking through the short sleeve knits. And as I look, I always glance over to see what's on the other side. And I glance over and I just see like this. And I'm like, and you know, when you look at something and once you start looking and you thrift a lot, you get used to looking and noticing quality whether you notice the detail and sometimes you get fooled, not gonna lie, sometimes you get fooled, but you can spot quality. So all I saw was this sticking out and I'm like, hmm, what is that? And then I go and I look and how do I get this tag out of the way for you guys? And it is a St. John's top. It is so beautiful. You can feel the quality in it. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like, Oh my gosh, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, I can't find a fabric content tag. All that there is is this little tag in here. Oh, it looks like someone cut it. But all there is is this little tag in here. It says professionally dry clean only. And good price, good price. I'm okay with that. This is something I don't know where to list it. I don't find a lot of these pieces. I did have a St. John's skirt like a really nice kind of bright teal pencil wool knit skirt I think it was like maybe last year maybe last summer and I think it sold for like 50 to 75 dollars uh, don't quote me but I don't know what to list this at I don't know what this is worth I did just do a quick search and I know that sleeveless St. John's tops at the bay right now so the bay is a canadian department store i think it's similar to like macy's or bloomingdale's is what someone told me and they sell for like 450 dollars. i was shocked i didn't realize that that's how much st john's sold for because i really don't find a lot of it it's not something i do comp searching on i will take any help you have for this top i don't even know where to start i tried to do a quick one obviously i gotta spend a little bit more time doing that all right this is my thrift haul i feel like it was pretty good I'm excited to show you guys it. I gotta get them listed though. Okay, I hope this helps you guys in your reselling business. These are things that I would be picking up. Obviously pay attention to your cost of goods. You wanna make sure that's low as possible and that you're making the most amount of profit that you can. But don't be afraid to spend up a little bit more. If your cost of goods is always like $5, try looking at items that are maybe 10 to $15 because if you're listing them at like, 65 75 85 dollars or they have higher value it's okay to pay up okay that's my two cents for today i hope this helps you guys in your reselling business make sure you give me a thumbs up let me know that you like these videos and i'm out i'll see you next time have a wonderful day bye